This episode will start off with a series of cinematics, and I won't have a chance to really say anything. So before the episode actually gets going, I want to get a few words in, and I want to apologize a little bit, again, for the quality of the audio. I had my microphone on while I was recording, and it picked up feedback. Now, it's not the loud hissing feedback. It's more of an echo hearing the audio off the TV, and then it's just getting picked up by the microphone. About halfway through the episode, or two-thirds of the way through the episode, I realized that mistake and I fixed the issue. But the bulk of this episode, including all of the cinematics, are unfortunately going to have this problematic audio. So I'm sorry for that, but going forward, it will not be an issue. I'll explain I'll everything, explain everything once we're back in the hideaway. Come on. You have an airship? Yeah. 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 You're my little kitty.
Settle the fuck down. I love you, Lucky, but you're a pain in the ass. That was terrible. I mean, it's a good thing I had the subtitles on so you can read what everybody was saying because that was hard to understand any of them. I kept the audio in there just so you'd have it, but it really didn't help much. But I promise you going forward, in fact, going forward from this point, we will not have that echo and that feedback. And you won't hear me talking to my damn cat who keeps knocking shit over in the background. Um, so we have this guy, Sid. He's another bearer who has created this kind of sanctuary for bearers. Now, the bearers in this world, the people who can use magic, unlike what we've you'd kind of figure, you'd kind of think that you had a kind of like um, Tervinter Imperium kind of thing from Dragon Age where people can use magic, have a kind of advantage over the rest of society, and they can kind of uh, dictate their own place in the world. They, they're more powerful than everyone, so they can sort of suppress everyone else. I'm guessing in this world, the bearers are such a few number, you know, such few in number that they, and plus they're they're discovered at uh, birth, really, that they are able to be subjugated, and they're they're outnumbered, they're sort of beaten down from birth, so they don't really have drive and determination to become a kind of a ruling class, so they are slaves. And that kind of sucks for them because, you know, it wasn't their fault. They didn't do anything. They didn't choose it. But, you know, sucks. Sid here, um, having his own magic abilities and all that kind of stuff, has gone and... He doesn't have a tattoo on his face, though, so I guess he was never actually enslaved the way everyone else was. But he does... Um, Plenty to yeah, I guess if you don't have a tattoo on your face, people aren't going to know, because you can't really just look at a person and tell that they're a bearer, unless they have the tattoo. So it's probably how he's been able to like go in and out of society as he pleases, whereas most bearers are simply unable to. So he sets up this sort of sanctuary for slaves in this world. Now, I, I don't see any children here. 
So I'm guessing everybody here is just a sort of a freed slave. It's not a colony which has existed for a while. So that's, uh, they're in this kind of ancient building or something. Now I'm seeing a lot of this, this ancient civilization that existed in the area. Now that's something that we had seen previously in earlier Final Fantasy games, sort of people living in the ruins of an older society which was much more technologically advanced. You saw that in Final Fantasy VIII where the gardens were built in these buildings that were actually sort of not quite airships but sort of mobile structures which was vastly more advanced in technology than what everyone else seems to have. And I guess um, Final Fantasy X is another example where everybody lives this sort of primitive existence due to religious reasons. But there was more advanced, there's remnants of more advanced technology all over the place. And in this case, it's a sort of a structure built by a more advanced civilization that these people are just sort of occupying now it's believed to be useless so no one is there now or at least it's why nobody has ever looked uh, and found newcomer. the bearers here taking shelter here our next so yeah it adds a little bit of backstory i'm guessing this whole ancient civilization thing is going to have a bigger presence in the story later maybe it has something to do with the their technology has something to do with the concept of bearers and dominance. Sort of like the way it did in Final Fantasy X, how you had the summon creatures, which were the summons, the uh, the Aeons, which Sid, were the, the blight through some, the probably land. through it some technological means, were was. created out of the souls of people who give themselves over All to it. Perhaps mind. the ability to use magic is sort of seeded genetically in the population by like thousands of years ago by this more advanced civilization in the past and it just sort of passed down um, passed down through descendants and stuff till now I'm just speculating though who the hell knows this room does look kind of weird though the floor isn't flat in fact it looks like they covered over a lot of it with these boards just to kind of level it out a bit but it's like it has no fl this place doesn't feel like it has a floor it seems like there are no floors and it's just kind of like i don't know cutscene just working on a pet project of mine though she's not above biting the hand that feeds her all right I was hoping we might try and solve the mystery of poor Clive Rossfield, a bearer of the Sambrequa Imperial Army sent behind enemy lines, with orders to wait until it turned into a brawl, then slit the Dominant's throat in the chaos. I didn't know it was her. How could it be? And so, to save her neck, you slit your sergeants, then set your sights on the hills. Conveniently forgetting how the Empire deals with deserters. Because with that on your chop, my friend, we both know you won't be getting far. You've fallen a long way, Lord Rossfield. Have it said that I'm a poor host. What do you mean to do with her? Do with her? Why nothing? Her life is her own now. If I wanted to use her, do you think I'd be talking to you? All I want to do is help. Dominance like her, branded like you. Of course, the realm doesn't approve, which is why we live in a cave. And it's also why we need help. From Brandy who know one end of a sword from the other. What say you, Clive? 
Will you join us? Sid, was it? I trust that you'll do right by Jill. But until my brother is avenged, I must walk my own path. Avenged? My brother was murdered by a second dominant of fire. The Phoenix is evil twin. Well, bugger me. Another rumor proven true. I only stand here today because of Joshua. Thirteen years I've waited for this chance. I've slept in filth, drunk from a gutter, killed more men than I can count. You're right. The Empire will not suffer a deserter. This will be my best opportunity. My last. Which is why you should join us. I told you I'm not interested, I know. One of my scouts sent word there's a group of branded fugitives north of here, in the Imperial village of Lost Wing. Among them is one he believes to be a dominant of fire. Is he certain? What say we go and ask him? This doesn't mean I'm joining you. Let's make ready then. You'll find everything you need down in the main hall, as well as a few things you don't. Have fun. That's an interesting turn of events. So, Clive doesn't quite join Sid here, but he does agree to work with him for a little while. And Clive is really just after revenge for the second dominant of fire that he believes killed his brother. And there's a rumor that a dominant of fire has been located near this Lost Wing place. But I think it's pretty freaking obvious that Clive himself is the second dominant of Fire's Ifrit. So if he's, if they've discovered a dominant of Fire somewhere else, that means that Joshua is alive, and that's who they've spotted. So <laughs> it, it is a little bit frustrating sometimes where you are in a story and you may be a step or two ahead of the characters. You really should be, like, stumbling across these things at the same time the characters do. But, you know, it's still the early game, and we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and continue on.